Welcome to the VMware Validated Design for SDDC product demonstration. In this video, we will demonstrate the configuration of VMware Virtual SAN for use in a private cloud. Let's start off by logging into the vSphere web client. All the business and end user workloads in a software defined data center run inside Compute Pods. Compute Pods are deployed inside data center racks. Each compute pod contains a minimum of four servers, along with a pair of top-of-rack leaf switches. As with the other pods, VMware ESXi is installed on each server, and the hosts are logically grouped into vSphere clusters. Multiple compute pods can be deployed within a software-defined data center. The pod design of the VVD makes it easy to start small and gradually scale. The pod design makes it possible to deploy separate compute pods with varying levels of quality, redundancy, and availability. Storage can be any combination of supported vSphere storage. The type of storage used is based on cost, performance, business requirements, and desired service levels. It is recommended to use virtual SAN-ready nodes, as it enables you to leverage the benefits included in the hybrid and all-flash storage configurations for virtual SAN. In this demo, we'll enable Virtual SAN for hybrid storage. Each of the hosts in the cluster have one flash disk and two magnetic disks that are not partitioned or formatted. These drives will be used for the Virtual SAN data store in this cluster. Before enabling Virtual SAN, we'll review configuration prerequisites. Virtual SAN requires a VM kernel adapter to be enabled for Virtual SAN traffic. Here we'll check the configuration of this host. We can see that this host's VM kernel adapter for virtual SAN has been enabled for virtual SAN traffic. We also see that the MTU has been set to 9000, as prescribed in the design. For this demo, this configuration has already been enabled on all four hosts. Enabling virtual SAN is done with a simple configuration wizard. When adding drives to Virtual SAN, there are two options, Automatic and Manual. In this demo, we are using Automatic, which allows all the flash and magnetic disks to be claimed by Virtual SAN automatically. The Virtual SAN configuration wizard provides a network validation to ensure all hosts meet the network prerequisites. The configuration of Virtual SAN with Automatic Disk Claiming is ready to complete. Virtual SAN is on, and there are four hosts in the cluster. The Disk Management section is used to review the disk groups created in the automatic configuration. In a manual configuration, it would show disks eligible for use by Virtual SAN. There are a total of four flash disks and eight magnetic disks that have been automatically added to Virtual SAN, one flash disk and two magnetic disks from each host. Virtual SAN provides fully integrated operations management for health and performance using the native vSphere web client. The service provides operational elements such as SNMP support, custom scripts, and emails with vCenter server alarms. For example, alarms based on performance threshold. It also provides a cluster-wide summary of virtual machine availability and detailed space reporting. The performance service is now turned on, and Virtual SAN is healthy. Let's review the new Virtual SAN data store that has been created in this compute cluster. Here we see that the new data store has been added with the name of vSAN Data Store. This Virtual SAN hybrid storage data store, backed by local flash and magnetic disks from each host, now provide 7.2 terabytes of storage to the compute cluster and the software-defined data center workloads. Let's rename the data store to follow our existing naming convention. This concludes the demonstration on enabling the software-defined storage using VMware Virtual SAN in the VMware Validated Design for SDDC. Thank you.